got some great questions coming in the chat. So if you're ready, I will go ahead and shoot them over to you. Fantastic. Do so. All right. So Scott Simpson wants to know, did, Brit did Britain want war with the United States or did they merely want to maintain their arbitrary domination? Well, um, when the Americans declared war in 1812, two days before that, the British had revised their orders in council. So they didn't want a war with Britain simultaneously while fighting France. It was not so much that they didn't want a war with the United States. They were fighting a war of survival against France. And that was far more important to them than was the fight against America. They never, they never, uh, not until the, the summer of 1814, did they ever send many men or equipment to fight the war in America. All right, uh, so we've got a two-parter here from Timothy Blake and Scott Simpson. Timothy wants to know uh, if the burning of Washington inspired US patriotism. I think you touched on that sense of nationalism that was a result of this conflict. And Scott follows up with that asking, did the United States support for the war remain consistent throughout the conflict? Well, no, in fact, New England did not support the war at all. That's why in 1814, when the British intensify the blockade, they extend the blockade more aggressively along New England. And that's part of the reason they wanted to slice off New England because they believed New England would join with the Canadian provinces and would come back into the British empire. Um, you know, other than that, Americans thought that the war, they saw the war, Americans saw the war as being a war that they had won. And the interesting thing about that, the Treaty of Ghent does not define a winner or a loser. It says a status quo antebellum, or things as they were before the war. And Americans define that differently than did the British. The British were just happy to get out of the conflict because they had been fighting France for 20 years. So, you know, as soon as they could quit fighting, then they quit being taxed for war. Gotcha. Uh, Sue Ellen Houston says, please comment on the American affinity with the French Revolution as a democratic movement. Did it affect our entry into the War of 1812 with Britain? Well, as when the French Revolution began, uh, Republicans, and these are not the Republicans of today, these Republicans here at the time, the party of Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, they are the forerunners of the Democratic Party today. The Republicans of today come out in the 1850s in the anti-slavery movement. But nonetheless, what I would say is that as the French Revolution began, Americans saw that as a glorious event because it was the French copying our model. They were going to embrace democracy. They were going to they were going to break against monarchism. And it seemed to be going really well until mob rule occurred. When the rise of the radicals in the French Revolution and when they, by the time they executed the king and queen, Americans said, oh my God, this is getting a little out of hand here. Um, yeah, you give them the short haircut around the shoulders and all of a sudden, Americans said, that's not a good thing. So they began to turn away from it. And then with the rise of Napoleon and the creation of a new monarchy or an imperial model under a, a dictator, more or less, Americans were still kind of, you know, trying to shed themselves of that. And while they were not cozying up to Britain, they were cozying up to Britain because they were trading with Britain. American ships, what most people don't understand is how important trade was. And at this point in time, Americans were the largest trading nation in the world. And our ships were plying waters from the Mediterranean to the Pacific, to the Indian Ocean, to the China Sea. And it was just amazing how much trade was taking place. Well, the British were getting a little upset because it was American ships that were beginning to cut out British ships from the commercial possibilities. All right, uh, let's see. 
Catherine McMahon asks, uh, mentions Paul Johnson's history of the American people, pointing out that he emphasizes that the British actually just lost their interest in their goals in North America and walked away from the war. Where do you stand on this? Well, I would say they don't lose their interest in North America because they certainly held on to Canada. And in the aftermath of the war, this Treaty of Ghent, one of the things that I'll talk about later is that they call for a number of commissions and they'd be a series of commissions from the 18 teens as late as the 1840s that solved a lot of these issues from the war. So they're very interested in getting what they want in North America. So yes, they're happy to get out of the war because that means the war with France is over now and with the war with America is over now. And all of a sudden they could go back to not being taxed so much. You know, for most of them, it's just, they didn't like being taxed. Who does? <laughs> uh, and last question we have at the moment is, uh, David would like to know if the cooperation between Oliver Hazard Perry and William Henry Harrison is the only example of service cooperation in the war or if there were others. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of instances where there is cooperation. Um, for example, Oliver Hazard Perry, of course, when he won that victory on Lake Erie, he took a letter out of his pocket and he wrote a note to Harrison that said, we have met the enemy and they are ours. And of course, that's one of the, the, the big points of uh, the campaign on Lake Erie. Um, in the Chesapeake, you had uh, Joshua Barney, who is commanding gunboats there, and he's working with a whole series of army commanders in the field trying to defend the coast from these constant British raids. And then, of course, in the Gulf, uh, there was a young lieutenant, a guy I've written a book about, named Thomas Ap Catesby Jones, who commanded gunboats on Lake uh, Bourne, which is the estuary just to the east of uh, Lake Pontchartrain. And by having those gunboats there, they were trying to prevent the British from using that as an access for attack. Well, he ultimately lost all of his ships, but he had been in communication with Jackson, trying to make sure that, you know, the British were, were limited in how they could approach the Louisiana coastline. So there was a lot of cooperation, um, but there are a lot of commanders who felt very self-assured of their own ability. So, you can't deny that. 